Hey, what's up, guys? I'm tired. It's early in the morning on a Sunday. <laughs> this is how much I really appreciate you guys. I force myself to wake up so early in the morning just to do this review. Uh, well, first, I really do appreciate you guys really enjoying my reviews. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about a theory or a character, a storyline, or maybe just a whole drama. You guys really listen, and thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. But I am not here to give you guys a tear-jerking intro. I'm here to talk about episode 5. I did watch episode 5, and the beginning... Wow! Okay, I did not expect that. And the ending... I did not expect that. So at the beginning of the episode, we see Heijin waking up in the morning... Next to Dushi! What?! That came out of nowhere! And then as she was trying to leave his house, of course, Namsook, she's there. Of course, uh, the moment she sees Hyejin leaving Dushik's house, here comes spreading the rumors. And word travels fast in that town. It's not a big town, so it travels fast. And now the entire town is basically believing this rumor that Hyejin and Dushik are dating. But we do find out that Hyejin was wasted i mean i don't know how many alcohol drinks she had but it was enough to basically be very very drunk so drunk she was pole dancing asking do she do i look like yuna kim man she was wasted but then when the two were at a restaurant you know eating uh Hijin asked Dushi, did anything happen last night? In my mind, you know, I'm thinking kissing, kissing, and then, you know, having fun together. But Dushi, he didn't directly say things happened. He was like, something did happen. Yeah, matter of fact, a lot happened. Then let's get to Dushi and Songhyun. First off, I didn't know I needed this dynamic duo. I want to see more of these two. These two were hilarious in their scene. When they first met, yeah, it was just small talk. But then when they went to uh, a restaurant talking about fresh fish, Dushik said, hey, fresh fish, you got to eat it the day you got it, like right after you got it. But then for Songhyun, since he's been traveling around the world, he's seen many ways to prepare whatever dish. So he's more like when you catch the fish, yeah, it's good when you eat it right away. But put it in the fridge. It's going to basically taste different. But it's still fresh. So these two are just going back and forth. And these two are basically the same person. But at the same time, they're not. You know, the way they talk. The way they're so passionate on, on certain things. They're basically the same people. But at the same time, you know, they have their own tastes and whatnot. So, yeah, I love this dynamic duo. I want to talk about one quick scene, and it was at the school. Hijin and Dushik were there, basically teaching the kids about dental hygiene and whatever. And the kids, they didn't hold back. <laughs> um, some of the kids says, are you in love? Are you married? You know, and stuff like that. Even even their homeroom teacher was like, okay, okay, that, that's enough. That's enough. But the kids, you know, they kept going and asking him questions about their dating life. And, yo, that was so funny. Now, speaking of the homeroom teacher, yes, there is that love triangle thing happening, you know, with Hwa Jung, her husband, her husband's ex. Now, to be honest, I have no idea where they're going to take their story. Um, this is a healing drama, so it's not going to be too much, I should say, right? And yeah, I... I really don't know. I mean, it could be a, a type of storyline where they need closure. Maybe. I don't know because, well, first, yeah, it is a healing drama. So I guess closure is what they're aiming for, for their story, right? Now let's talk about towards the ending of this episode. Towards the ending were basically shockers for me. Um, this review might be a little short. But anyway, um, first off. When Hyejin and Dushi were at the beach while it was raining, first off, that was a beautiful scene. Just seeing these two basically look like a romantic couple. But then Hyejin remembers one little thing. She actually kissed Dushi. 
So that's what Du Sheik meant when a lot happened. It wasn't just Hijin being wasted. It was so much more after that. She kissed him. Now let's get towards the ending of this episode. Uh, this review might be a little short, but I'll keep going. First off, when Hijin and Dushik were at the beach uh, while it was raining, first off, they looked like a very cute romantic couple. I love that. Hijin remembers one little thing after she got wasted, you know, after just running around, pole dancing, Kim Yuna thing. She remembers, she suddenly remembers that she kissed Dushik. That came out of nowhere, and that's what Dushik meant when a lot happened. He wasn't just talking about her running around being wasted. Mm -mm. She kissed him at his house. Huh. And then we see Dushik seeing a therapist about having the same nightmare. And I believe this is his nightmare. He's basically by himself in the dark with no direction to go. It's almost like he's trapped. And then as he's freaking out because he has nowhere to go, we see a bloody hand touch his shoulders. And I'm assuming that's his grandpa. I'm assuming. And then after that, Dushik does wake up because of his nightmare. Uh, we're basically in the same scene of him and Hijin sleeping right next to each other. So we're at the beginning of the episode. But what comes after that, I find it so heartwarming. He wakes up because of his nightmare, moves next to Hijin, and smiles. I find that to be so heartwarming because he had a nightmare, moved next to Hijin because he finds comfort next to her. How nice is that? And this is a healing drama. So my impression on this episode, it was a very nice episode. Seeing Hijin drunk was pretty hilarious. Seeing the kids ask about their dating life was pretty hilarious. I'm still not sure where they're taking Hua Jung's love triangle, but it could be a closure thing. That's just a guess. Uh, we actually got to see Dushik's nightmare and that bloody hand in his nightmare. I think we can say that's his grandpa. So something happened to him and he feels very bad about it that he couldn't help to stop it. I did have a theory in my last review about Dushik uh, not being able to help his grandpa. That's why his grandpa maybe passed away. And that's why he's doing all of these jobs to be helpful for the locals. So again, that's just a theory. But after seeing his nightmare and the bloody hand, I'm starting to think that my theory is true. What's also nice is that seeing Dushi can find comfort in Hijin, even though they do go back and forth sometimes. But uh, most of the time, they do have a nice connection with each other. So for Dushi to find comfort in Hijin is very, very heartwarming. And yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the episode and my review. Well, even though my video is basically vertical, I would try to put something to add on to the video. But anyway, if you guys like this video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. See ya.